Hello everybody, Jesse here from Jason Inspired. Always a pleasure to have you guys here. So today we're going to be talking about the data module in Python and all the methods you would need to build the Airbnb project. So without further ado, let's just get started. So first things first, what in the world is the data module? So as you can see right here from the official documentation, the data module actually supplies classes for manipulating dates and times. The keyword here is supplies classes, okay? But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna be concerning ourselves with just a class that is supplied by the date time module, which is also date time. So I know it sounds a little bit convoluted because you have a date time module and then you have a date time class inside a date time module, but that's what it is. So yeah, all the methods we'll be using to manipulate dates and times in this project will be found inside this date time class. And the first of them is the now method. So let's just hop over to VS Code and let me show you how to implement this. So to get started, let's go ahead and import the date time class. So I'm just going to type in from date time, import date time, just like that. Next, let me go ahead and create a variable. Let me just call this current time. And I'm going to set it equals to date time dot now. So that's the method I was telling you guys about. Now I'm setting this to current time because what this method does is that it helps us retrieve the current date and time. So if I go ahead right now and print this out, you can see current time. Save this and execute my scripts. So as you can see, guys, in my standard output, I have the current date and the current time printed out. You could also confirm it with the time right here on my terminal. Now. This is for the hours, the minutes, the seconds, and then finally, after the full stop, I have microseconds, okay? So in the future, I'm going to be using this final value here to explain something about data serialization, but for now, just understand how the format works. Another point to note is that this current time variable, which you see right here, is of type daytime objects. So if I go ahead right now and I print out the type, you would see that it's actually of type daytime objects. But a lot of times, especially for storage purposes in context of this project, you may want to format your daytime objects as a string. And that's what brings us to the second method we're gonna be talking about, which is the ISO format method. So to implement this, I'm just gonna work on this current time variable. So I'm just gonna say current time is equals to current time dot ISO formats, just like that. Next, I'll go ahead and print out the new value of current time. And I'm also going to print out the type just like that so we can observe what our output looks like. So as we can see right now, the type is of class string. It's a string object. And then secondly, we still have the dates right here um, separated by a delimiter T, which you can see right here. Okay. And next, we still have our time as usual, hours, minutes, seconds, and microseconds. In addition to all this, beyond just formatting your daytime objects as strings, many programming languages actually have some inbuilt functionality or library to parse um, strings, daytime information in ISO format. So that way it provides a very consistent and portable way of preserving your daytime information across many systems and programming languages. And in Python specifically, we have the from ISO format method that actually helps us do this. So it helps us create daytime objects from ISO format strings. So to implement this, I'm just going to come right here and I will set my current time is equals to date time dot from ISO format, just like that. Next, I'm going to put in current time, just like that. So this looks good for now. Let's go ahead right now and run our scripts. So as you can see, guys, I currently have my daytime information back as a daytime object. So um, the from ISO formats method, as you can see, guys, actually accepts one parameter, which happens to be the string in ISO format. So in line eight, I converted the daytime object to a string in ISO format. And in line 10, I converted that string in ISO format back to daytime object. So when I printed out the value, you can see that right now I have the data type to be a daytime object. You know, understanding how this works also helps you appreciate the intuition behind the name from ISO format, okay, because you're converting a string from ISO format back to the time object, okay, so I hope that made sense. So guys, finally, before we call this a wrap, I still want to show you guys two more methods you can use to achieve the same effect of ISO format and from ISO format, okay, so um, the first of them is 
S-T-R-O-F time, strif time. So that's how I pronounce it, but actually stands for string format time. So you can use this same method to achieve what ISO format does in that it converts date time object to um, ISO format strings. Now to do this, I'm just going to comment this one out first. I'm going to do current time is equals to current time dot strif time. As you can see, guys, it actually accepts one parameter, which is called the format string. So I'm going to go ahead right now and paste in my format string. Now, if this looks a little bit mysterious to you, don't worry, we're going to understand it right now. Now, this format string you're seeing currently is made up of what is called format directive. So the format directive defines how the output will be formatted. Now, I know this sounds like, like so much grammar, but check this out, guys. If you notice from the outputs we had with ISO formats, the first set of digits you see right here represents the year, which is represented by percent Y. Next, you see a hyphen, which I also have a hyphen right here. Percent M also stands for the month, which you can see right here. Next, I have a hyphen. Um, percent D stands for um, the day. Next, you have a T right here. I also have a T right here, as you can see. Next, I have my time percent H for the hours, minutes, seconds, full stop. I also have a full stop right here, um, which I also have right here. And then percent F stands for the time in microseconds. So when you're using strip time to format your daytime objects as a, a string in ISO format, you're manually sort of converting it, okay, and specifying how the output should look like. All right, so let's go ahead and execute our code to make sure we are accurate. So as you can see, guys, we currently have our daytime objects formatted as a string in ISO format. Something really exciting also about this strip time method is that it gives you some flexibility to choose how your output to be formatted. So currently, for example, I have a T as a delimiter between my date and my time. I could go ahead right now and delete this and replace it with two spaces, for example. And if I executed my script again, you will see that instead of a T right now, I have two spaces as a delimiter. So you can go ahead and customize this as you wish with the strip time method. And last but not the least is a strip time method. So strip stands for string parse time method. All right. So basically it does what from ISO formats method does. To implement this, I'm just going to type in current time is equals to date time dot strip time. So as you can see, guys, it actually accepts two parameters. The first of them is the string in ISO format you want to convert back to date time object. So I'll go ahead right now and type in current time. Next, you're going to have to put in the format. So I'm just going to paste in the format right here. So make sure that you're pasting the exact same format you use for the string, okay? I'm just going to save this and execute my scripts. As you can see right now, I have my um, string in ISO format converted back to date time object. So guys, that's it for the daytime of you. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. And if you're new here, you might also want to consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you can be up to date with every video which I'll be uploading. And that's it from me for now. I'll see you in the next one.